Bruce Goldstein is, is the Executive Director of the Farm Worker Justice in Washington, D.C., a national advocacy litigation education organization for migrant and seasonal farm workers. Mr. Goldstein's work is focused on litigation advocacy on immigration issues and labor law, and his activities on guest worker issues have included litigation uh, against private employers and, and, the, and the government. Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, uh, thank you for the opportunity to testify regarding the H-2A Temporary Foreign Worker Program and the needs of migrant and seasonal farm workers. Congress must act now to address the needs of agricultural workers, employers, and the nation. The solution is ag jobs, the Agricultural Job Opportunities, Benefits, and Security Act, a bipartisan labor management compromise. Rather than promote ag jobs, the administration proposed changes to the H-2A program regulations that would slash H-2A wage rates down to the level acceptable to undocumented workers, minimize recruitment of U.S. workers, end the obligation to provide workers with housing, eliminate most oversight uh, of employers' applications, and eliminate the 50 percent job preference for U.S. workers. It also is considering eliminating transportation cost reimbursements. Even the notorious Bracero guest worker program had more protections. The majority of farm workers are undocumented. The Bush proposal would do nothing to change that reality. Still, 30 percent to 45 percent of farm workers, roughly 750,000 to 1.1 million farm workers, are U.S. citizens and lawful resident immigrants. Under the H-2A law, they are entitled to first crack at agricultural jobs and to be treated decently. We urge Congress to stop the Bush administration from finalizing its proposed changes to the H-2A program. Ag jobs is a responsible solution. It would revise the H-2A program in balanced ways and allow undocumented farm workers to earn legal immigration status by continuing to work in agriculture for three to five more years. Congress should pass it immediately. The Department of Labor routinely violates its obligations under the H-2A program now. I will highlight just a few examples of problems U.S. workers face when trying to get jobs at H-2A employers. Many employers prefer guest workers because they will work for less than U.S. workers and can be con controlled more easily because they cannot switch employers and they depend on their employers for a visa in the following season. Sabrina Steele is a farmer in Blount County, Tennessee. She recently decided to seek work off her farm. She applied for jobs at farms listed at her state workforce agency. These farms participate in the H-2A program. She was amazed at her inability to get hired. Employers refused to give her a job application, told her the job was filled despite her entitlement to be hired during the first half of the season, told her that she'd have to work 80 hours a week, and didn't accept her assertion that she could do the hard work of farming. As the newspaper coverage pointed out, and it's in your materials, she was astonished at the H-2A employer stereotyping and discrimination against American workers as lazy and incompetent. The H-2A program is supposed to prevent these things, but did not. Recently, a large California company called Tanamora and Antle received approval to employ H-2A lettuce harvesters. The company laid off 15 people in December 2007, even as there were H-2A workers employed by the company. Two laid-off U.S. workers filed a complaint with the help of the United Farm Workers, stating that they inquired about the other jobs upon being laid off, but were told there were no positions. Tanamora then said it would allow the laid-off workers to apply for jobs in its fields, but one laid-off worker was told by a company official that he could not have a job because he had been quoted in a, in a newspaper story about the discriminatory conduct. The company also offered the laid-off workers a lower wage rate than required. The DOL should prevent such abuses instead of waiting for workers to file complaints. When DOL plays a role, it often is to workers' detriment. Last year, the Hawaiian Queen Company applied for H-2A workers to raise queen bees. The company's H-2A application described a work week of 50 hours based on a nine-hour day, five days a week, and five hours on Saturday. A U.S. DOL official in an email asked the company's agent, quote, is there some particular reason the employer wants to promise the worker an extra 10 hours of work pay per period? This, the three-quarter guarantee is more difficult to achieve at 50 hours per week required than 40 hours per week. The company said, okay, change it. So the DOL official changed the employer's application to state that the job was for eight hours of work Monday through Friday, no work on the weekend. An employer is supposed to honestly state the work week's hours. That helps U.S. workers and foreign workers know how much work there will be, how much they can earn, and what their schedule will be. What was going on here? 
DOL persuaded the employer to evade the potential for having to pay compensation to U.S. and foreign workers under the three-quarter minimum work guarantee. Rather than guaranteeing workers that over the course of the season they would have the opportunity to work at least 37 and a half hours a week, the employer would only be guaranteeing 30 hours a week. DOL should stop telling employers to misstate the number of hours of work. To conclude, this, the, the Department of Labor knows that there are rampant violations of workers' modest rights under the H-2A program. Instead of enforcing workers' protections, however, DOL is now proposing to eliminate most of the worker protections. Congress needs to stop DOL from moving forward on these H-2A regulations that are ill-advised and anti-worker and needs to pass ag jobs. Thank you.